Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we're going to be having a look at this Give Energy EV charger. I've not made a dedicated video on these before. It's always been in combination with an all-in-one and a gateway. In this case, we're combining it in with those things already. They existed, but we'd had that ongoing problem. This is my home, where however hard I tried, the um, EV van would at some stage still discharge the house battery, even with CT monitoring on various other different EV charge points. It still happened from time to time, so I thought we'll go for the same ecosystem, everything talks to each other, and that can then be a thing of the past. So we've got the Give Energy 7.2 kilowatt, I think it is, um, EV charge point ready on the wall here. I've run through the whole install, I'm going to share that with you in a minute, but just to say how this works, there's buttons within the app to turn off discharging your battery at any stage. So if you want to do a full charge into your electric vehicle you still can do that but it will take the energy from the grid and it will take the energy from the solar if you so choose there's all kinds of ways you can adjust this from just a solar charge a hybrid charge you can have it where the sunshine goes directly to the vehicle and not the house battery all the other way around all of those options are under your control you can even split the percentage so it does a bit of both it is really really clever at the minute it's doing its software update because I've just gone through the commission, I've just set it all up and um, made its first little charge into the van to make sure everything is working. But let's get straight to the install video and I'll show you how easy this is to actually get on the wall and wired up. So I've got the Give Any Charger out ready to stick on the wall here. I'm going to get on with it, I'll leave this recording in the background and I'll jump in with some bits and pieces that you might need to know while you're installing these and talk about some of the features and the way this merges into the Give Energy ecosystem. I'm going to get on with it. So these are super simple to install. You can see it comes with a bracket and fixings. There's just a couple of those that you need to get into a solid surface and then you can look to secure that bracket to the wall. The charge point itself simply hangs upon it once you've got it level and straight. And then there is a couple of other fixings in the back of the charger that I'll show you in just a second, which makes sure nobody can just come along and lift it away off that bracket. I'm checking the instruction manual here because it always pays to give you a quick glance over, even if you've done a few of these before. You can see I've marked those two lower down fixing holes. And again, plug and screw those through and that then secures it to the wall surface. So nobody's going to be nipping off with this as they're passing by the end of your driveway. I've gone for a HO7 cable coming down here. It's six mil and I'm just using clips to pop it along the mortar line. You can plug and screw these things or use D-lines and all the rest of it. But for my particular install here, I'm quite happy with this cable just clipped up. And again, we're using a hammer's distance between every single clip ensures it's held nice and securely and pop one underneath the charge point as well just to make sure that it's not going to get snagged and pulled out anywhere even if there is a gland on the bottom too just gives it that extra bit of security so it's not going to get knocked off the wall and take the cable out the charge point with it and as always with these connectors they are fine stranded cables and we want to make sure we ferrule those up so they're not going to splay apart within the terminals and we know we've got our reliable solid and secure electrical connection and this is a pretty straightforward job there's really not a lot to wiring these up you just get your line your neutral and your earth in and we'll have a little look a bit closer up at the wiring terminal now so i'll bring you in close to see inside of the terminations there's really not a lot to do in here which is good for us as installers because um, it's pretty straightforward you can if you want put an, an ethernet cable in there if you're connecting um, by a cabled internet connection we're just going on the wi-fi on this one really strong signal it's at my house and um, i'm happy with that uh, line neutral and earth this is your little uh, tamper detector and then you've got some of your um, outputs for your metering kit so if you want to do your rs 485s um, you can do that and same for your cts all in there nice and handy cable this up i've got it a bit closer to um, the van and cars than it once was and really that's to try and reach around onto the drive a little bit further. I did have it behind the gate before. I'm not that worried about people coming and stealing electricity. So it, it is what it is on that front. Um, yeah, so that's now secured back. You will have seen, let me get this, because this is funny. Uh, Matthew, screwdriver. Look at the state of that, the bend in it. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to go up to the unit and get all my hand tools. So I've been making do with some of his in the van and he obviously doesn't leave his best gear in there in case it gets stolen but yeah managed to make it work even if it was a bit of a, a boomerang rather than a straight screwdriver but yeah really easy you just got your three cables in line neutral and f this all does cloud sync now i'll show you the app how all that goes together 
get the front on, get it all weather sealed, do the testing, and um, I'll jump back and show you it being commissioned in a sec. So you can see here, we've got the hole there to pop on there as well, just to take in the charging cable, keep it securely held into position. And there's three fixing holes for that. Similar process of the plugs and screws. And then you can coil away your cable should you wish around it and it will hold the charge plug as well. And again, as always, just check in the manual to ensure everything is in position as we need. A final check over of all of the bits and pieces before we run through the electrical testing and also commissioning the system. It's always worthwhile giving the cable a wipe down. They tend to collect a little bit of dust from the drilling and such, however neat and tidy you try to be. So just for a bit of aesthetics, make sure it's clean for the customer. Okay, so I have started a screen record as well, and I'll keep referencing the screen back to the camera, but I'm gonna take you through the initial commission and setup, and you do that on the consumers app with these. I've showed it before on the channel with a couple of others when we've done them alongside the all-in-one, but never as a dedicated EV charger video. So we'll do that now. You, um, if we go back to the main screen, I'll show you from the beginning. So when you first sign into your given a GECO system, if you can see here, it's showing my system as it is. It's not especially sunny right now, so we're only doing 750 watts. But if we go to the EV charger, it'll ask us to start a commission. We then choose our configuration, and you can either do it as standalone for grid charging, if you're using a CT meter, or in my case, we're going for the inverter control. So this is internet connectivity, given a G solar inverter, given it is your cloud user account. So we're going to choose that. The DNO fuse value, I'm very lucky and have a 100 amp fuse. Um, I will drop that down to 80 though because we're running through a switch fuse. Is there an ethernet cable? No, as I said, we're doing this on Wi-Fi. So we now need to scan the QR code on the side. If we find that, get it to focus. There we go. So it's found it and we now need to give it um, an internet connect uh, connection. So if we uh, go on to that, change that to always, signing my life away in the app control. So please turn off mobile data, which we'll do, turn Wi-Fi on, um, and now we can do a scan for the network. Hang on, what am I doing here? Let's make sure I am actually connected onto my Wi-Fi. So connect the device you are using to the same network as the EV charger will be using. So I've done that now. And I now need the password. And this always catches me out because I can never remember the bloody thing. So just bear with me two seconds while I find a picture of the, the code and I'll jump back to you in a minute. Uh, this could be fun. Okay, so now I've put the super secret password in and probably had to blare out much of what I was doing. It's asking me to go and restart the charger. So I'm gonna zip off to the consumer unit and um, the gateway and turn the power off. And I'm back in a sec. So I've just restarted it, you've heard it beep, it asks you that question in the, the screen there, so make sure you have listened for the beep, and then it starts to run through the procedure um, in terms of its commission. So if I hold you in closer here, you can see it's connecting to the EV charger. So we're gonna join its network, and it'll then communicate um, directly to the charge point. It'll then configure it and connect it back to the internet. Uh, please try this again. Okay, so that is me needing to be on the normal internet now. So the charge point is now doing its thing and registering online, and I need to make sure that I am doing the same so they can speak to each other through the cloud. Um, at the minute, they're not doing that, but you can see it's um, beeped again, and my device is now back on the internet, so it's registering the EV charger to my account. So it's on the last few little steps and then it will um, pring back up hopefully and tell us we're all working unless I entered that Wi-Fi code incorrectly in which case it won't <laughs> we'll see okay so it's managed to register my um, charger so if we go to the dashboard now you can see at the minute it's not charging and this is where you can start to make all of your configurations um, so for me I'm going to go back to my home dashboard first and there's the settings icon to press and we want to see the EV charger within my main control. So we can see that now. If we go back to the EV charger, there's a few little changes 
um, I want to make in the way that this is behaving. So if we go to settings, you can see at the minute it's doing solar charging mode. So it will do that from any export. Um, it'll prioritize solar to the EV, which I don't want. I want to prioritize solar to the house battery. And we've got the prevent battery discharging to EV box ticked. That's the main reason for going down this road with the whole ecosystem bin give energy. Um, so we don't do that. And there you can adjust all of your settings and things should you need to. You can also do schedules. So if you want to set a, a schedule up, you can do so. If you want to have it so when you come to the charge point, you just need to plug it in. You can do that. I've got some ID tags, so I'm going to add those into the mix. So if we add a tag, I can give it a name. We'll just call it uh, tag one. Uh, nickname can be the same. Why not? Oh, sorry, it's ID is its its number. So I need to put that in one three zero zero. So we'll add that tag, and then tag two, it's just the numbers on the front of the tags. I have usually do this through the um, web portal, so this is first time doing it with the app, but it's a bit easier, I suppose. Uh, three, four, one, four, we'll call that tag two. And we'll save those. So if I go back to manage my ID tags now, we can see they're in there. If we hold them on, you hear some beeps and interactions and they should, whoopsie, they should now trigger charges once we plug the vehicle in. So that's a way of charging it. Um, you can lock and unlock the charge port direct from the app. You can restart the charger, which is super handy. Um, you can rename it if you want to give it a set name. You can change it to plug and go. So if you don't want to mess with the Rifid cards or use the app to start anything, um, you can just do plug and go and it will just start charging. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pop the van, plug it in, it's just here, and we'll see if it actually works and starts to wait to charge the van. It shouldn't start charging it because there's no solar export currently. So you can see from my um, portal here that we're currently generating, pushing up towards a kilowatt, it's getting a little bit brighter but it's not quite enough to um, export anything to, to the grid. I did just fire in a manual charge to start it charging, um, just to check that it was actually working and functioning, but I've now swung it back into solar mode within the app. So the, the data that you'll see on the screen here is a little bit out of date. It's checked it for it like one minute 47 ago when it was still on charge. It's now no longer on charge. If we go into the EV, I can show you. So on the EV charger, it's currently not charging and it's waiting for that um, export so it says your EV will charge based upon instructions given by your give energy inverter if you need a fast charge hit the little button up there or charge your EV on your own schedules so if I wanted to start it um, I can press the little button down there and it'll go to grid look I'm not going to do that now we're just going to leave it waiting for some solar export and as and when it sees it it should pick that up um, the interesting part actually if I start to charge it let's do a grid charge now so it's uh, swinging back into a charging state and it'll start to consume if I go to the dashboard actually we can see that when it was charging from the grid this is from a few minutes ago that none of it is coming from the battery so the battery is serving normal house loads and the, the EV draw if you like has been taken from the grid and the solar so it's trying to cover that off um, in that way rather than discharging the battery which is what we want to avoid so it does work uh, in that that sense but if we go back to the EV charger again and I'll just stop it charging and it can sit there now and wait for solar export your charger is currently doing a software update so we can't really do a great deal with it presently however the basic principle is if you are to you can see at the minute we've got 
900 watts of generation and there's 20 watts coming in from the grid but that's really just to keep it in sync and that solar gen is going into my house battery. The house loads are at zero because we've got another solar system on the shed which isn't integrated into this so that kind of covers the house loads at the minute. It makes this some confusing sometimes when you see that because obviously we are consuming power in there um, but yeah I haven't set it up so it's measured within the GIM energy system it's just a little bonus. Um, so yeah that's not there. But um, as it's currently set, we've gone into that solar mode. So if I leave the van plugged in now, it will wait until there's more than 1.4 kilowatts of export, and then it will start to make use of that into the van. I've also got it set so the solar's priority is to go to my house battery. So it won't do that until the house battery is full. You can swing that round the other way. So if you want to leave your battery in the house, not taking the solar and put it into your vehicle, you can do that all from within the app. It's really, really handy. If I go into the EV charger side of things now, because it is updating, I don't know quite how much of this we'll be able to see, but you've got all of your settings in there. So we've got our solar mode. You can do a hybrid state, which is where it'll blend a bit of the grid in with that. Um, we've prioritized the solar to the battery in the house. You can do it to the EV and we're preventing the battery discharging to the EV. That's the important one. And there's loads more of these settings that you can just within the main portal if you prefer to log in through a web browser as i usually do but the functionality and control is there in the app which is handy you can also set your schedule so if you want to do that you can do in the charge function you can push the little button at the bottom as i just did there and do a grid charge because it's doing its software update i'm just going to let it get on with that and, and not start that presently um, but if you was to do that and you did have it on solar mode the way it works is it will go to the seven kilowatt charge rate into the van, but it takes that power from any extra solar in the system that isn't being utilized anywhere else. And the rest comes from the grid. It won't take it from your all, give energy all in one battery that sits there. It's obviously, you know, you've got 13 and a bit kilowatt hours of energy in there. It only takes a couple of hours of charging and it's totally empty into your vehicle. Some people might want that for me. Absolutely not. That battery sat there to cover off um, the agile prices when they peak a bit higher so we can ride those windows out without having to pay for you know more expensive energy i don't want to put it in the vehicle um, but there are times where i do need to get on with the charging of the van because i'm going somewhere and it's handy to just be able to take that from the grid and not affect the way the house is running uh, so yeah that's that in and waiting the app's giving me all that super duper control the little uh, tags here so if you want, as I said, you can leave it just on plug and go. So you roll up, plug your car in, it'll just start charging. If you are concerned about other people maybe using your charger, you can have them with these on your key ring or the control from the app. So somebody just plugging in, it wouldn't do anything. So you've got that versatility within the system, um, should you wish. And hopefully this is going to make my problems disappear now. Because as I've said, however have we tried with a, a Zappi, with the wall box, on occasion, it did still discharge the house battery. Um, it kind of just runs away sometimes it, it's because it can't understand what the battery is actually doing even though with the, with the zappy you can ct uh, monitor the battery and tell it not to discharge it it's still on occasion would i think it's maybe something to do with internet connectivity i'm not sure but it would still happen the wall box the same and they're fantastic chargers in their own right i really rate them um, but i think going forward when you're going into these kind of whole home systems if you like um, it makes sense to stick with the same brand because they can all talk to each other. You get much more uh, configuration and compatibility between everything. And it's going to be interesting to see how this performs. I will report back. We have got these out in the wild on customer installs. And I know once the first little learning how to use it phase is over, they're having great success integrating them to the Octopus um, tariffs where they take control of your charger and also that the house batteries haven't been discharging. So it does work, um, but I thought proof of the pudding, I'll try it myself. And that's what I've been doing. So thank you very much for bearing with me on this video. I hope it's useful to those of you who are out there considering what EV charge point to go for. This gives you loads of versatility, even if you're just after a charge point in its own right, you don't need to combine it into a Give Energy ecosystem. However, if you are in that position where you've got a hybrid inverter from Give Energy or the all-in-one, this combines into those absolutely perfectly and prevents those battery discharge into your electric vehicles. And it also will integrate with any export solar generation to make use of that within your vehicle as well. They're really easy to install. They're super easy to use. The app is among the best on the market, in my opinion. That's not just for EV charging. It's across a whole range of solar and battery storage solutions. The tech support's brilliant. 
and the price point as well these are among the best value on the market half the price of a zappi for example which is absolutely incredible to be honest if you've got any questions about this or you want to know something i haven't covered within the video please do drop it in the comments if you've got any tips or tricks for me as an installer do the same i'm here for that feedback always trying to develop and learn from other people out doing this job day to day and otherwise don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i'll see you on the next one